Today, we're gonna to talk about a fun topic, the directional board machine. We've got some reluctant guests. This is Paul. How long have you been with us, Paul? Uh, basically 10 years. 10 years. And this is Luke, my youngest, biggest son. Directional drilling is when you're set up on top of the ground, ground entry, and you go in anywhere from a minus 20 to minus 30%. So your head is gonna be at an angle that you're gonna lose two feet of elevation every 10 feet roughly, or three feet of elevation. But the way you level that out is the paddle on the front is bent. As you push the paddle where it's pointed, it'll come up, down, left, right. However, you have a transmitter inside that can tell you the rotation index of where the paddle is at. And then basically you're trying to level out, get to desired depths to dodge utilities, or if you have a minimum, you know, required installation depth. Our drills can go anywhere from four to 500 feet. They could go further, but that's typically what is on board as far as how many rods you have. So you're basically drilling a 10 foot rod, unscrewing it, backing the carriage back up, slide another rod in, and you repeat that process. You're just using that paddle to drill if you wanna remain at the pitch and direction you're going. And if you wanna go left or right, you'll push, or up or down, you'll push it, whatever. It has a clock, six o'clock, you'd push it down. And so the rods have a certain amount of bend radius. A lot of people ask that question. They're just mild steel rods. And they have a certain bend radius depending on the size of the rods. You can steer in every rod only a certain amount. There's a maximum you can do without causing permanent deformation to the rods. One of the hoses in there is also for water. You are pushing water down hole with a pump and you can vary the flow rate of the pump. If you're pulling big product and you need all that mud to come back, if you're doing what we do and you're just making a small hole and then pulling back, you're just using that water to help break the ground up. It keeps the tooling, it helps the wear life. You know, a lot of people mix what they call mud, which is bentonite, that holds the hole open. If you're in harder ground or anything like that, it helps float all that material back because of the, the density and things like that. You do everything right by the book, you pull the shot back, they all come back straight and your product follows behind it. So after you push out, you hook the product up, pull it back, depending on the size, you may have to ream it multiple times to continue to make the hole bigger. We don't really have to do that because an inch and a quarter for fiber is usually all we ever need. So people ask about the cab and the seat and stuff like that. It's not a ride on machine. So you control it from the back or with a remote, track the drill to where you want it, stake the front down, put your back blade down. And that's how you get a nice, powerful stance to give you the strength to drill out. That's the uh, drilling 101. So over here beside you, you see one that's been tore apart. So this is about a 2011 machine, and it's a 3650. If we were to go buy this new, say it's gonna be between 500 and 600 thousand dollars. A 2440, which is basically the same drill, right, Luke? With the the, the way they do the Just pressures a 10 now. Foot. It's a 10 foot rod. This is a 15 foot rod machine. So this machine is 13 years old, and if you can see the mess and all the hydraulic <laughs> lines on the ground, what we've decided to do is this machine was working. Mm -hmm. And, but it had, there's limit switches and electronic things. Like there, there, there were some limit switch issues. Um, a lot of the hoses were in rough shape and it had got to the point with some of the newer equipment that we bought that we weren't using it quite as much as we used to. And so obviously when you don't use something for a long time, you know, you can have issues related to that. So we've decided we're going to fix everything that's an issue with it, replace all the hydraulic hoses and get this thing back out on the side of the road. Yeah, any hydraulic system, the hoses are gonna wear because there's vibrations anytime it's pumping and then stopping and pumping and stopping. You'll, if you watch any hose, you'll see it kind of just shifting back and forth. This drill is kind of unique in the fact that as the carriage comes down, it's got about nine hoses that travel with it to handle your rotation and your rack and pinion thrust motors. As far as this drill goes, there's kind of some thresholds that people in the industry know as far as your hours go. Two to 3,000 hours, you're gonna have to replace the front end, the vices, which is what grabs a hold of the rods, breaks them loose. The rods are tapered, so it allows for them to not be cross-threaded as you screw each new one up. When you drill a rod out, you gotta lock onto it, break the carriage loose off of it, unscrew it, and go back and torque another one on. So when you're pulling it back, you wanna break those rods loose. The vices is what's doing that front. The front one grabs it, and the back one has the ability to grab it and roll. And so that's a lot of moving parts, it's a lot of wear. Usually replacing those at two to 3,000 hours Two to 3,000 hours is when your hoses will start wearing. They'll get bad spots in them and things like that. So if you're just replacing one hose, it can be a real big challenge. So we do them all at once. It helps out a lot. Five to 6,000 hours, you're looking at the motor, you're looking at your pumps, things like that. So at 3,100 hours, we're hoping to kind of get a, 
a second half of the life before we see you know major component replacement as far as the powertrain is concerned. This stake down system was never adequate on this machine. Not for this size machine. Right. See, another thing y'all are doing is y'all got to looking and measuring and you, because we have a 2440 machine, you were able to, you're gonna basically take all this off and put the larger stake down system on it. Yes, sir. So we're gonna go through, change all the limits, any harness that's bad, hydraulic lines, we're redoing some of the electronics in the cab, and then you're gonna fix everything in the cabin, the PLC, all the controls and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, where it works. Well, the meticulous thing about this process is replacing all the hoses. Right. Um, how many hoses do you think? I haven't have? counted exactly how many hoses are I mean, on this drill, but it, it's a lot of hoses and we're replacing pretty much every one of them. All down in here, we've got hoses that run from underneath the hood where the engine is up to where the vices and all that goes to these arms that load the rods and unload the rods in and out of the rack, which we've got the rack removed right now. And then hoses that run all the way to the back that run, work the carriage, work the tracks, raising and lowering. Of, of the drill, all that kind of stuff to get it set up. It's a pretty big undertaking. And I noticed this nomenclature. Can you tell me a little bit about what y'all are doing here? We're just labeling where, the, where they, they come from, whether they come from the carriage, whether they come from up front where the vices are, whether they come from the belly of the drill on the underneath side. We're just labeling. Where oh, so like when I see V, that stands for vice yes. six. As we pull the hoses back in, we know what hose goes where and what end goes to what end. And some of that's critical, like the length of the hoses. For, oh yeah. For somebody that doesn't understand, it, it can't be off six inches sometimes, yeah. right? Because there's a carriage that carries yes. like eight or 10 hydraulic hoses that move the 15 foot of the track with the head. Another reason we decided to, to redo this drill is it has a rack and pinion system that's two-sided. The 2440 drill, Luke can speak to this better than I can, but it's a one-sided rack and pinion. You have to get in this class of drill before you get double-sided. And we like that better because you're not using up the torque in the rack and the pinion system if one side's flat. So you got a lot of wear pads in this. This way the, the load is balanced off of one side. Vermeer, they started building plows and then they've kind of evolved into stump cutters and grinders and different things. And then they went into the directional boarding business. This is probably the newest drill that you would want to rebuild like this because you can kind of do everything yourself. You can diagnose all the relays. It's no different than you're looking at vehicles now. Right. You now, if you buy a 2024 350 and you're probably gonna have to take it somewhere to get work done versus your 1993 Ford, you know, you can pop the hood and get yeah, to whatever like, you need like to get this, to. This probably has one PLC, one computer, and it is pretty much where we can check it with an ohm meter, change limit switches, make it work, and, and be able to work on that ourselves. Where the newer drills now, if you don't have the diagnostic tool from Vermeer, you're out of luck. Yeah. Now, this is gonna be expensive. We're probably gonna spend Twenty to fifty thousand dollars on this upgrade yeah, with yeah. the hoses and a number of other small things, replacing bolts that are sheared off. I mean, just just down to the final, you know, the small details. I mean, you're looking. At, I would I would estimate probably thirty thousand dollars. Right, but since the hydraulic motors, the engine, you know, those are components that are bought from other people. They have this five, six, eight, ten thousand lifetime. Drilling is hard on the machine too. It's almost yeah. like if you took a excavator and you were trying to dig rock every day with every a dirt bucket. The There's a lot of moment on the rotational you hit a you're drilling fine you hit a rock and it, you can see it load everything up in the carriage. It's if you have five or six four or five hundred feet of drill string out it likes as as a big spring mm -hmm. so it loads 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 then it snaps and, and all that is transmitted back into your system. If we sold the drill it's probably only worth what sixty eighty thousand dollars. Right now with interest being higher People not buying new ones as much, you could probably get a little more out of it, but you're not going to get the value out of it versus realizing it yourself. But part of the reason we're undertaking this is because this has been a very good piece of equipment and we do know how to work on it for the most part from front to back. We haven't used it as much as we should have lately and we want to get it back out. Well, and it's a good production machine because it's got the 15 foot rods. When we're boring, yeah, it's a big machine. It's a 3650. Most people would be pulling back eight and 10 inch products with it. We're only pulling back two inch and a quarter. We're basically, I like to say that we're displacement drillers. We're not bringing a lot of the soil and the mud back. We drill in the hole and we basically compress the soil and the dirt out of the way just to get the width of the drill stem and the head of five inch hole. And then we're only putting in what, I guess the duct's an inch and a half wide and an inch and a quarter, so with the wall thickness. So we only need a three inch hole to get the duct back because we're typically only pulling back 
two ducks. Now we'll drill for other people and do four and six inch, eight inch stuff, mm -hmm. but but we're mainly just out and back, out and back. And uh, that's another reason to to kind of refurbish this drill a little bit is some of the work we do for other people and we're pulling back, you know, eight, 10, 12, 14 inch reamers, this would be the machine that you would want to use in a lot of those instances. It's a neat little project. We, we appreciate you guys uh, following along and seeing it. I know that this is kind of a specialty niche kind of group of folks. In this case for us, since we already had the drill, the five or $600,000 cost to replace this drill and then maybe spend Twenty to forty thousand dollars on it, upgrading the stake down system, replacing the hoses, and it's a whole lot easier to replace these hoses in here than it is on the side of the road somewhere, yeah. you know, in a field, in a ditch, right. you know, something right. like that. So yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know this was a little bit of a different video. It maybe will appeal a little bit to a different audience. If you like what we were doing, drop us a comment in the comment section below. We appreciate you watching. We had a reluctant guest this time in Luke. If you liked him in the video, drop us a comment in there and we'll encourage you to get him back in there. Send it to one of your buddies. We know we're gonna start maybe adding a little bit more and talking about different aspects of the drill. And as always, if you'll hit like and subscribe, it'll help us keep making these videos and we'll be able to pay Steven.